let's make the fish for your tacos. Don't be scared. If you've never made fish before, this is the easiest preparation, baked fish. We're just gonna season it and bake it. it takes all the fear out of it. Always use the Monterey Bay Seafood Watch app for fish that is sustainable and also humanely caught or farmed. Today we are using hake, which was uh, the, the best alternative at the fish market. And what did we do to our fishmonger? Tip your fishmonger. That's right. So this is uh, hake, which is uh, US wild, not Canadian. The Canadian one is not good. You shouldn't buy it. We're just going to put olive oil on it like this, smooth it in, liberally salt one side, liberally salt the other side. Now I'm gonna pepper this. I mean, this is it. This is the whole thing. And you're gonna pepper both sides like that. And you want it to be flesh side up. If it does have skin, you'll be able to easily take it off the skin after it's cooked. And I'm gonna use some heavy duty tin foil. Do you know most of the tin foil, aluminum foil in the world, do you know where it comes from? You'll be very surprised. It comes from Iceland. Like Reynolds Wrap is Icelandic. And I'm just gonna lay the fish like this. And then for the hell of it, I'm just gonna squirt a little lemon juice on there. In this case, you, the seeds don't matter. So you're just gonna squirt a little lemon juice. And then I'm gonna actually cook this lime like this. And when we squeeze it, it's gonna be very delicious. So I've heated my oven to 400 and I'm gonna cook it until it is translucent, but opaque. <laughs> and when you put a fork in it and move the fork, it'll split apart like a big thick page of a book. It won't mush or you won't have to pull it. That's how you cook fish. Now, this should be used in tacos, not straight from the oven because that's a little weird if it's super hot, but it shouldn't be cold. But you know what? You can serve it room temperature. And I have, and it's, it's kind of light and delightful. You don't want, the golden rule is you don't want to serve this hot in a taco. That's a little weird. Avocados. More accidents in the kitchen happen from bagels and avocados than any other thing. I read that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut very carefully around, <laughs> that's where it happens, the edge of your avocado. Then you're gonna twist it like this and you break the two sides apart. Everybody knows this at this point, but you go like this and twist it and out comes the pit. There's another spot where you go to the hospital. Look for the part with the little stem and cut that out. And then you're just gonna peel your avocado. If it doesn't peel, it means it's not ripe. You know, the other day I was making, making tacos and I got, bought eight avocados at the supermarket and every one of them was black inside. So I'm not this kind of person, but I just wanted them to know that maybe a box of avocados had been tainted in some way. So I did in fact go and say something. They were very kind and they gave me uh, new avocados, which were superb. Slicing avocados for a taco tray. Basically you wanna give people slices of avocado. Beautiful, thin slices of avocado. And you're going to arrange them like this. Peel the other half. Work, work, work. Hello, boys. Lovely. And then I'm gonna put my chipotle mayonnaise here like this. Avocados. Um, what you want to look for is yield to gentle pressure, just like myself. So you want an avocado that when you press your thumb in it, it does go in, but it doesn't push in and mush in, and it doesn't resist like a brick wall. So you want it to be pressable, so it leaves a small depression. That's how you pick a good avocado, just like a man. I don't know how to make tortillas. My friend David Schaefer learned how to make tortillas, and man, can he make them good? So if you have a friend who makes tortillas, it's a fun time to have them over. If you don't, 
Many companies make good ones. I like flour, some people like corn, some people like hard shell tacos, I like soft. To make these really special, what you wanna do is take a small amount of butter on a little brush and just gently brush each taco with a little bit of butter. And this you can do when your guests are sitting there. You can sort of talk, la la la, yes, the boy did talk to me. He was very funny and intelligent. He was age appropriate, unlike his girlfriend. And then basically you can do two things. You can quickly put these in the oven and just have them be warm and then stack them up in a bowl with, you know, take a clean dish towel and put it open in the bowl and just stack up your tacos, right? Or you can take this and just kind of set it on top of the gas ring for a second and then just pit, take it off and put it in your decorative bowl. Um, if, you do, if you cook them too long, they become brittle. The fish is ready and I'm gonna show you how we know it's ready. So if you've never cooked fish before, this is the most forgiving preparation. It's for tacos, it doesn't have to be perfect looking, and it's a great way to start your fish experience. What I'm looking for in the fish is when I put the spoon in and I turn the spoon, it flakes apart, like big flakes. See those flakes? They're like flakes of a book, see that? Okay, so you want something like that. See that piece? It's like a book. In this case, because maybe you're scared to cook fish, this is the perfect thing to do because tacos, you have to break it up anyway. So let's get rid of the fish mystery. See, it's gonna flake apart in like leaf-shaped pieces and it's wet, it's beautiful. I'm gonna use this cooked lime, which is extraordinary. Pick up the fish and I'm gonna transport it to the taco tray like that. Like this. I've been making a lot of fish tacos this summer. Then I'm just gonna take my spatula and I'm just gonna break it up a little bit like this. What's a taco without a lime? So you wanna take your limes, cut them in half, cut them like this. They're also very beautiful, I think. And I love the smell, they almost smell like perfume. I wish there was a really good lime perfume. There's a couple of good ones, but not really good ones. How beautiful is that? I'm gonna put a little spoon in here. You can also serve it with um, sour cream. Some people like sour cream. A good place to warm your tacos is when your guests are here, you've assembled your tray, you've turned off the oven from the fish, is just put those lightly buttered tortillas in the oven to warm, but don't let them warm too much because they, they crisp. Ah, 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 oh God. Okay, that was... <laughs> Super hot, <laughs> delicious buttered warm tortilla. I usually bring them to the table like this so they stay nice and warm, pliable and yummy. And just, you know, elegantly continue to warm them as people assemble tacos. And that is taco night done right. I like to do it this way. A little bit of coleslaw in the bottom. A few pieces of avocado like this like to spread them out a little bit. A little bit of fish. Oh, look at that. Freshness and beauty abounds. A little bit of chipotle mayonnaise. And then you're just gonna fold it like that and chow it down. Yum, 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 Mr. Taco, lend me some taco. Boom, 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 boom. I like a taco, that's a fact. Boom, 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 boom. I like a taco anytime. A little taco, it's just fine. Oh God, okay, that was super hot. <laughs>